On this edition of Tacoma Report, we'll learn about some machines that are taking advantage of all this sun, how you can help save water, and find out where you can do some bird watching. Stay tuned. Welcome to this edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Anita Gallagher. Officials at Joint Base Lewis-McChord estimate they will transition six to 9,000 warriors out of service each year for the next four years. Many of them will stay in the area and need civilian jobs. Workforce Central is partnering with the Tacoma Rainiers and U.S. Representative Derek Kilmer on the third annual Boots to Work Military Career Fair and Outdoor Expo. This event will provide a way for transitioning military personnel, veterans, and their families to meet employers offering jobs. It will be held on Thursday, August 20th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Cheney Stadium. More than 50 businesses with available job openings plan to attend the event. More information is available at workforce-central.org. Connecting workers with employers helps revitalize communities, and the city is helping to foster revitalization in Tacoma neighborhoods. The Lincoln Revitalization Project Open House is taking place on Thursday, August 20th at 6.30 p.m. in the auditorium of the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. The public is invited to attend this information session and learn more about the revitalization efforts planned for the Lincoln District. Improvements include the South 38th Streetscape, public safety, economic development initiatives, and more. Visit the project website for more information. Metro Parks Tacoma is trying out an idea to spruce up the waterfront. Metro Parks has partnered with the city's Solid Waste Management Department on a pilot garbage and recycling program along Reston Way. Megan Snow has our story. Metro Parks are trying some new garbage and recycling units down here on Ruston Way. The new containers are to increase efficiency and increase the amount of space that the containers hold because they're also a trash compactor. The other piece that's really unique is the technology side. All of these pieces are actually controlled and operated by GPS and satellites, so it's actually the cans are talking to us in a way. They actually send emails and alerts to our maintenance staff cell phones when these cans get full. They track how much consumption the community is using on them, so we can analyze all this kind of data. The trash and recycle units like this one have the trash compactor on one side for garbage, like pet waste, diapers, and food waste. On the other side is a recycling container for paper, plastic bottles, and aluminum cans. People may not know is if you put a product that isn't recyclable on the recycling side, the entire bag or the entire side is contaminated and we no longer can actually take it to the recycling. We have to just treat it as garbage anyway. So what I want the community to do and really hoping that they will do is really when they walk up to the can and they have their garbage is to really think twice like, oh wait, which side should I put what on? We installed six of these particular units along Rusted Way. The first one at Old Town Dock all the way throughout as you walk towards Point Defiance, so they're kind of scattered throughout. And it allows the city of Tacoma to come in, who is a partner with us, and actually empty these garbage cans efficiently for us versus trying to go all the way through parks. So Ruston Way is a perfect environment to begin testing how we all operate and how we um, recycle on the waterfront. There is still time if you haven't used the new solar trash compactors to come down to Ruston Way and give it a try. For Tacoma Report, I'm Megan Snow. The pilot is also part of Metro Park's broader commitment to reduce the waste stream and find more ways to recycle. Creating a financially and environmentally sustainable programs and services is the mission for the city's environmental services and public works departments. The departments were recently awarded the American Public Works Association accreditation for their work in advancing the city's services. This accreditation recognizes public works agencies that go beyond the requirements established in the industry. These two departments are the sixth in the state of Washington to receive this accreditation and were recognized for the achievement at the July 14th City Council meeting. Up next, we'll find out how we can help protect our water supply during this hot and dry summer. Our record-breaking hot, dry weather this summer and lack of mountain snows last winter have created historic low river levels around our region. With this in mind, Tacoma Water is bracing customers for a possible water shortage. John Phillips has more. 
Here inside the Green River watershed, the North Fork of the Green River is just a bed of rocks this summer. During a normal year, the same stretch of river looks very different. Many of the mountain streams here went dry months earlier than normal. We started out with zero snowpack uh, in our watershed, which has never happened before. We followed that up with uh, the driest May on record and then the hottest June on record after that. And July uh, wasn't a lot better. Those mountain streams normally replenish water stored behind Howard Hansen Dam. During most summers, this water is needed downstream to keep the lower Green River flowing toward Puget Sound for fish and to Tacoma Water's intake facility. This year, most all of the stored water will be required in the river to support fish. This is one of our uh, in-town wells that we have here in the city of Tacoma, and these are instrumental this year in helping us um, keep as much water in the river as possible. About half of the water customers need this summer is now coming from about two dozen wells. The underground water supplies will be critical through the late fall when rains and snow are expected to return. So far, the aquifer is healthy enough to meet the demands of Tacoma Water's customers, but the utility has issued an advisory to encourage people to use water wisely. This is only an advisory stage, letting our customers know that there could be uh, uh, some scenarios in the future where we, we could ask them to um, curtail their water use. If the situation worsens, customers could be asked to take voluntary or mandatory water conservation measures. In 1987, the drought was so bad, mandatory use restrictions were imposed that banned yard watering and car washing. For now, customers can help by watering lawns after the sun goes down to reduce evaporation, using a broom instead of a hose to clean sidewalks and decks, fixing leaky toilets and faucets, and washing only full loads of laundry and dishes. Uh, we serve 300,000 people, and if, if everybody does just a little bit, every little bit adds up, and um, it would just provide that much more of a cushion for us later on in the year. Tacoma Water says this drought is as bad as or worse than the one in 1987. But it adds, with a little help from customers, we should be able to get by this season. For Tacoma Report, I'm John Phillips. Tacoma Water serves over 300,000 customers in Tacoma, Pierce County, and South King County. The potential water shortage is a regional concern. Water utilities serving Seattle and Everett issued similar customer advisories at the end of July. You can get water saving tips by visiting tacomawater.com smart. Are you interested in a law enforcement career with great pay and benefits? Entry-level testing begins this fall with the Tacoma Police Department. Go to cityoftacoma.org slash tpdcareers to learn more and submit an application. Or you can come to the TPD Diversity Job Fair on Saturday, August 15th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Bethlehem Baptist Church in Tacoma. Tacoma artists are helping create some new and diverse art pieces. The Shanghai Museum of Glass recently commissioned Tacoma's Museum of Glass to create 20 new kids design glass pieces for a new exhibition in China. The Museum of Glass Hot Shop team was given 100 drawings to review and they've been creating these pieces since the end of June. The Museum of Glass recently Skyped with the Shanghai Museum of Glass with live MC speaking in both Mandarin and English where visitors had the chance to ask questions and interact in person and through the live stream. Visit museumofglass.org for more information. The AMACAT Arts Awards recognize those in our community who provide distinctive contributions to the arts. The honorees work hard to support and build our community by innovating in artistic excellence. The Tacoma Arts Commission is currently reviewing all nominations to select one finalist in each award category based on their community impact as well as the quality of their work. Awards will be presented by Mayor Strickland at the Tacoma Arts Month opening party in October. We'll continue to keep you posted with the latest updates. When we come back from the break, we'll learn about the art of bird watching. Some of the best bird watching in the state can be found right here in the Tacoma Pierce County area. But unless you're a birder, you may not be able to recognize certain species or distinguish their unique sounds. However, as we see in this report from Lane Fickey, there's an organization that can help you with that. The Red Crossbill, Belted Kingfisher, Northern Flicker. 
These are just a few of the more than 70 species of birds that can be found in and around Point Defiance Park. A great way to learn about these and also wildlife conservation is through the nonprofit environmental organization, the Tahoma Audubon Society, which is located at the Adriana Hess Wetland Park. The group's membership includes more than 1,700 households in the Tacoma Pierce County area. Bird watching and identifying different species in our region is one of the main areas of focus for this Audubon chapter, which began in 1969. But the group actually formed because of land use issues. And that continues today. There's a lot of population growth. There's a lot of pressures in Pierce County, all the way from Commencement Bay up to Mount Rainier and land use um, issues come up all the time and so we are always there. Our members are on the ground and they're ready to respond and let us know what's going on and um, make sure that we bring a voice to the table that rep represents nature and wildlife that um, doesn't really have a voice. The Tacoma Audubon Society has a strong partnership with the Tacoma Nature Center and Metro Parks Tacoma and it also offers a lot of educational programs for both children and adults. One aspect that makes the Audubon Society so appealing to many people is that anyone can participate. You don't have to be a scientist, you don't have to be a politician, you don't have to be an expert in a subject. It's something that any person, young or old, can get involved with and get engaged with and have a voice. Um, and to be able to enjoy and connect with nature and also to be able to be an advocate and speak up when needed. The Tahoma Audubon Society recommends going to the eBird website for a list of great bird watching locations. There you'll find hot spots with a lot of activity and also the type of species you'll find when you're out there, even at places like right here at Point Defiance Park. For Tacoma Report, I'm Lane Fickey. The Tahoma Audubon Society has numerous walks and field trips coming up in the next several months. Check out the events calendar on their website for all the necessary information. As you turn your attention to the trees and sky, you may notice that some days are more hazy than others. A new law may help reduce that. It's no secret that Pierce County has unhealthy air during colder months when many households rely on wood-burning stoves for heating. A new law that applies only within the Tacoma Pierce County smoke reduction zone will help the region meet air quality standards. On October 1st, this new law will require old wood stoves that are not EPA certified be rendered inoperable. The Puget Sound Clean Air Agency is offering zone residents financial incentives to get ahead of this new law. For more information and to take advantage of the wood stove buyback program, visit airsafepiercecounty.org. A group of Tacoma Public Utilities employees spent a day off helping people who are trying to make home ownership a reality. Volunteers from TPU converged on the Habitat for Humanity development called the Woods at Golden Given on July 18th to assist with installing siding on two houses, painting, and landscaping work. The Habitat for Humanity Workday is among three dozen community service activities TPU employees take part in each year. The volunteer groups are an important part of the Habitat program, which provides families on limited incomes an opportunity to finance and build a modern, efficient home they can call their own. The Tacoma Pierce County Habitat Program is coordinating construction of 30 homes on Golden Given near Parkland. For the third year in a row, the City of Tacoma has been recognized by the International City County Management Association for its performance management efforts. The City has been honored with a Certificate of Excellence from the ICMA Center for Performance Analytics. Certificates are awarded at the levels of achievement, distinction, and excellence. Tacoma is one of 33 jurisdictions receiving the Certificate of Excellence, the highest level awarded. After the break, we'll find out how peace is coming to the community. Hate Won't Win, a grassroots movement started by Alana Simmons, the granddaughter of the Charleston murder victim Daniel L. Simmons Sr., came to Tacoma August 2nd. Simmons was invited by the Tacoma Urban League, NAACP Tacoma, Pacific Lutheran University, National Association of Black Veterans, and the Family Renewal Shelter to speak about the movement. More than 200 people were in attendance to accept the Hate Won't Win Challenge, which has been taken by communities across the country and by President Obama and the First Lady. The movement is focused on forgiveness and showing kindness to someone different than you. To find out more, follow the Hate Won't Win Challenge on Facebook and Instagram. 
Building community comes in many forms, and seniors helping other seniors in Tacoma is one of them. The Senior Companion Volunteer Program, part of Senior Corps and overseen locally by Lutheran Community Services, is looking for volunteers who are 55 or older, low income, and drive a car. Volunteer positions pay a small stipend plus mileage and meal reimbursement, all non-taxable. The volunteers will be trained to work with seniors who still live in their homes in order to help them continue living independently. Call the number on your screen for more information. Click Cable TV invites you to enjoy a free showing of an iconic drama from the 1980s during the next Click Family Flick. The 1984 martial arts drama The Karate Kid will be shown at the Grand Cinema on Saturday, August 15th. This original version of The Karate Kid stars Pat Morita and Ralph Macchio. Admission to the Click Family Flick is free, courtesy of Click Cable TV. The movie starts at 10 a.m. Seating is limited and children must be accompanied by an adult. Well, that wraps up this installment of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. Thanks for watching. I'm Anita Gallagher.